Hello YouTube, it's Jim Chapman, American Air Gun Hunter. Haven't been around for a while, been having a busy summer. I've been in and out of the country and uh, doing a lot of stuff. Work related, not air gun related, but uh, I'm back at it now, getting some shooting in, getting ready for the upcoming hunting season. Um, today's video is going to be a departure from some of the ones I've done before in that uh, it's not going to be a, uh, a, about a specific hunt. It's not going to be about a, a specific gun or review. But what I'm going to do is um, actually something that's been requested quite a bit. Um, and I've had a lot of uh, YouTube viewers and people from my website and other places ask me about my, my gun collection. And uh, it's been going on for about close to 30 years now. It's gotten pretty extensive. And I've got a lot of different guns. And um, one of the ones that most recently has been asked about are my uh, big bore air guns. Part of the reason, I think, is that the season's getting ready to start up. More people are getting interested. They want to go hunt deer or hogs for the first time with an air gun. So they're asking about the guns. Now, I'm going to show you the guns in my collection. Uh, I'm not going to, to give a heavy critique of which one I like better or worse. Uh, the truth of the matter is, any one of these guns will do a job on game. And, and as a matter of fact, every one of the guns I'm going to show you, I've taken deer and I've taken hogs with, so I can, and, and some bigger stuff as well. Uh, I can speak pretty highly about, uh, about all these guns. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just tell you a little bit about the, uh, the collection. If there's a backstory, I may tell you a little bit about that. And uh, we'll just look at the guns. It's kind of, think of it as a show and tell, not as a, um, not as a review uh, on guns. So uh, as always, if you like this video, well, this one especially, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. Tell me in the comments and tell me if you'd like to see more videos like this and if there are any particular topics you'd like me to look at. And uh, we'll do it. We could look at my collection of bull pups. We could look at my collection of springers. I mean, there are a lot of things we could, we could look at. Um, so anyway, uh, appreciate your support and uh, let's get on with it. Take a look at these guns. The, uh, the gun I'm going to start with is actually the gun I started with uh, when it comes to big bore air guns. And that is the, uh, the Quackenbush. I'll give you a little backstory. The uh, Quackenbush uh, guns are, are very important to me. It's, uh, it's really where I started big bore air gunning. It was back in about 2000, 2001 maybe, uh, I met Dennis Quackenbush. I was going back to South Africa um, on a regular firearm hunt and I wanted to take an air gun to shoot guinea fowl with and I approached Dennis. Uh, I wanted something a little bit more powerful, a little bigger. Uh, I was talking about a 308. Ended up, he built me a 25 for that hunt that I took over to do my first guinea fowl. And while I was there, I had the idea, and I was talking to some PHs I know, uh, about coming over and doing a big game hunt in South Africa. And we went through all the paperwork. We got all the initial uh, forms, governmental uh, agencies that had to sign off on it and approve us to do it. And on those hunts, I went almost exclusively, the first two or three I did over there, almost exclusively with uh, Quackenbush air guns. I think if you're into big bore air gun hunting, Quackenbush is a special gun. Uh, yeah, guns have come along that are maybe more refined or maybe more powerful, but um, in terms of, of just the beauty of the gun, uh, the, the kind of uh, elegance of the design and the, uh, the, the look and feel, it's still, I think, a superb big bore air gun, one of my all-time favorites. And, and one thing I'll say, I've, got, I've been through about 14 or 15 over the years that I've bought. And as a matter of fact, Dennis used to let me buy the guns at a very reduced price, take them on my hunts to South Africa, and then come back and sell them. And the market was three, four times more than I paid for the gun. And I would make enough for, for selling my two or three gun battery from that hunt to write off most of the hunt. So um, that, uh, that was a, a very important thing for me because that's what I started writing about. And I started doing all these other things that got me going into air guns the way I am right now. So let's take a look at the, uh, the Quackenbush. The two I've got in my collection now are a 452 and a 308. The 308 is a gun I've had for many, many years. Uh, that was one of the early ones that he built for me that I've hung on to. Uh, one of the first 308s on the long action. Uh, and uh, the 452 was a uh, caliber he built just for me. Um, and I was at a, uh, in a shooting event and I talked to Dennis about a gun I wanted. And, uh, and I wanted a short barrel on it. I wanted to go down a little bit in the caliber to try to, to 
to gain some of the velocity back I was going to lose because of the shorter barrel. And uh, we came up so with this 452. So the next I'm going to cover, and I'm not going to do this in any particular order, is looking at uh, one that was uh, developed uh, in conjunction with a, a friend of mine, uh, Kip Perot, who was with Air Guns of Arizona. And uh, Kip and I had done a, uh, a trip over to, uh, to South Africa together. Uh, it was my... I think my, my fourth or fifth trip uh, back and um, he joined me, we did some filming, we had a really good time and really talked a lot about um, what the, the perfect big game gun would be uh, to go back uh, on another trip to South Africa. And he started working with, uh, with their team at Air Guns of Arizona and they developed a, a gun called the Bushbuck. And the Bushbuck to my eye is, is actually just one of the most beautiful um, big bore air guns that was ever built. It's, it's a bit on the heavy side. It's really engineered. Uh, I wouldn't say over-engineered, but it's engineered for strength. It's a single-piece receiver, a uh, solid gun, and it can handle the uh, the pressures. It fills up to 4,500 PSI, uh, and it's just designed for big slugs. The barrel is uh, it has a special twist that they developed to deal with uh, heavier slugs. And um, anyway, so so this was uh, so this is another gun in my collection that uh, has a lot of meaning. Uh, I had a, a great time over in South Africa with with. Kip. Uh, we took a lot of game together. We did a lot of uh, really good hunts. Now, when the gun was first designed, it was with a full length barrel. And you notice one, this one is shorter. They built this carbine link for me, knowing I love carbine link guns. And I think it's available as a carbine now as well as a, as a rifle. But this carbine is just, just about perfect. And even though, again, this gun's a bit heavy, it just it has just a perfect feel to it. It balances so nicely. I uh, love this gun. So let's take a closer look at it and I'll tell you a little bit more. As I uh, mentioned, this gun is called the Western Big Boar Bushbuck and uh, finally I just call it the Bushbuck, uh, AOA Bushbuck. Uh, it's a, a 45 caliber gun. It's actually a 452. Um, and uh, they went that way rather than the 457. Um, I, I'm not sure of the exact reasons, but I find it gives me a good flat shooting uh, trajectory really like this gun. The stock, as you saw, is a beautiful laminate stock. It has a bushbuck uh, embossed into it. Uh, it's got a, a adjustable cheek piece. Really nice feel to this. Um, and also, I think I mentioned it's a one-piece receiver, a very solid chunk of, of metal. There and this is something I, I really quite like in this gun. Uh, it has adjustable power. Uh, there are two settings. At the high power setting, you get about 600 foot-pound for two shots with the gun, uh, or you can go to 400 foot-pound with four shots, or you can mix and match those as, as you need. It has a really nice trigger, breaks about uh, four pounds. It's, it's long, 49.5 length overall with a 30-inch barrel. Uh, weighs in at about 10 pounds, 10.5 pounds uh, actually, and uh, is equipped with a 285 cc reservoir that fills to 4,500 psi. Great performing rifle, great looking rifle. This is one of those in my uh, big bore collection that uh, again, I won't get rid of. I like this gun a lot. Now the next rifle in my collection, or actually I should say group of rifles in my collection are the uh, Air Force Texans. Um, the Air Force Texans, I think, are one of the, um, the big bore air guns that really changed the game and that it was the first big bore air gun that was uh, available, accessible to, to a larger part of the, uh, the hunting community. So um, all of a sudden you had a, a company that was producing in large volume at, a, at an attractive price point and putting these guns out into the market. And I think Arguably, they've become probably the uh, big boy air gun that, that's taken more um, big game than any other single air gun. And uh, I, uh, I've got a group of these. It, you know, interesting, the first time I shot one, I was at a, uh, an air gun, um, it was a competition or show in Texas. And um, as I was uh, driving out to the, uh, to the meet, um, I, uh, I'd been talking with, uh, Yvette over at, uh, at Air Force Air Guns, and she said, well, stop by on your way. There's something you really need to look at. Um, Eric Henderson and I have been talking to them for years about a big boy air gun, and I think Eric was working there at the time. Uh, anyway, they, um, they asked me to stop by, and I did, and uh, they pulled out the, uh, the Texan, a uh, uh, prototype of the Texan. It was uh, in, uh, in 457, and or maybe it was 50. I don't remember exactly, but I do remember we went out uh, into their range uh, behind the uh, the manufacturing facility, and uh, there was a barrel set up at 65 yards uh, with a uh, a target, and we had a uh, 
uh, a Texan up on a, a rest, a standing rest a tripod. And uh, I shot three shots in a row that clover leaf and um, I was really impressed. So uh, the, the gun comes in a number of different calibers. Um, I've actually got all of them, both in carbine and rifle. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, the gun comes in um, 257, uh, 308, 357, 457, 50 um, caliber. And uh, it comes in now um, uh, both rifle and uh, carbine versions. And I say now because <laughs> this is one of the things. I. I as I've already mentioned a couple times, I really uh, like a carbine or a more compact rifle because I end up spending more time carrying my rifle when I'm in the bush than I do shooting. And there's not very much I'm going to shoot with, say, a 600-pound uh, foot-pound gun that I wouldn't shoot with a 500-foot-pound. I, I don't think maximum power is that important in the overall scheme. It's always good to have more power, but when you can kind of um, balance that out and get the right shooting platform. So um, on all of my um, early... Uh, rifles. I had the barrels cut down, recrowned, and made my own carbines. This out. gun is one that carries really well. Uh, it's one that uh, that I like uh, to have slung over my shoulder. It's lightweight, uh, especially in the carbine. It's compact. I can carry it around uh, for for hours with the rest of my gear. Uh, and uh, I, uh, this again, I find that with a couple of slight modifications, this butt pad helped a lot. That I'm able to get a good side alignment. The the kind of butt uh, kind of uh, tank for a butt stock may take a little getting used to in terms of uh, getting a consistent cheek weld. But once you get used to it, it's it's actually fine. Um, I uh, I shoot this rifle really well. So let's take a closer look at it. I'll tell you a little bit more about it. I had been asking for a long time the uh, the uh, Air Force people to give me a shorter barrel length, uh, and they were more concerned about getting the, the maximum power out of the gun that they could. Um, you know that claim was very important to their marketing, so they wanted to keep getting a the, the maximum power. And my argument that. I'd give up a hundred foot pound of energy to get a more compact gun, kind of fell on deaf ears. So that's why I cut down the barrels and made my own carbine. But eventually they came to understand that there was a market for these uh, and uh, they started developing them. So now you can get a carbine without going through the steps of cutting down the barrel like, like I had to. Um, the guns come, as I said, with either a, a, a um, steel tank or a carbon fiber. The steel tank's filled to 3,000 PSI, uh, the uh, carbon fiber to 4,500 PSI. The standard length overall with this gun, and you'll see why I wanted to cut it down, is, is 48 inches uh, for the standard length uh, with a 34 inch barrel. The weight's about seven and a half pounds, so it's substantially lower weight than most of the big bore air guns that are out there. It has a really nice two-stage adjustable trigger. I like the trigger on this gun a lot. And as I said, there's just a, a variety of calibers. So you can get a caliber. I've got one set up just for doing my predator hunting, um, you know, going after coyote at longer distance. I've got one set up for going after boar in the thickets uh, down in, in South Texas. Uh, and it's great to have that uh, collection. Um, in terms of power, the, uh, the standard uh, gun in 45 is putting out about 600 foot-pound. The carbon fiber version uh, 45 is doing about 700, and the, the carbon fiber in 50 is doing about uh, 800 foot-pound, which makes this one of the most powerful guns out there. I mean, it's in the rarefied era where, to me, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, you, get, you get three or four guns that are putting out uh, velocities. Um, you get two or three guns that are putting out um, about the same type of power output. You get one that's doing substantially more, but for, for any of those, it doesn't matter that much. It's more about the gun itself, to me anyway. So, um, several years ago, a, uh, a friend of mine, Randy Mitchell, who I used to hunt a lot with, he's down in Kentucky, came over to Africa with us uh, on one trip. Uh, but one of the real originals in air gun hunting um, Started a, uh, a company with a, a gentleman he had manufacturing gun for him that he sold as the Corsair. And this was a, a gun that was um, really uh, made leveraging a lot of the, uh, the, the materials and designs off the QB78. It was a Chinese CO2 gun. They used, I think, the, the receiver and the, um, and the trigger group from that gun. And uh, a few years later, another company, Epox, came out with a gun that was based on the same thing. They didn't reuse the uh, components, but they, they used the design and they remanufactured they it. They beat it up and engineered it a little bit uh, heavier duty. And uh, they came up with a gun called the Epox Badger. The Badger is a uh, 40 caliber PCP air rifle. 
Uh, this is mine. You'll notice the stock on it is a stock that I bought from Richard's Microfit and uh, I shaped it and I finished it uh, myself. Uh, it utilized the, the typical QB stock before. That was one component they did reuse from that. Uh, it was kind of a, a inexpensive wood and not a real great stock. Um, I'm not sure if this gun is still in production. Um, I know that it was carried by Air Gun Depot and a couple of others a, a while back. Um, but uh, I've used this gun quite a bit. It, uh, it balances well. It's, uh, it's really a fun gun to, to hunt with. And I've had some really good success long range shooting with this. 40 caliber seems to work really, really well. So let's take a closer look at the gun and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. The Epic Badger is about 44 and a half inches length overall with a 27 inch barrel. Uh, the weight's just under eight pounds and uh, it fills to 3200 PSI and produces two full and one shot a little bit off the, uh, the, the, the peak, but a usable shot. Uh, the uh, gun was originally based on components that were uh, of a, a Q, the QB78 uh, design, as I mentioned, but they were modified and manufactured by Epic. They weren't slapping um, QB components onto this gun, but they were based on that design. Uh, really great gun and uh, has done very well for me in the field. I, I really enjoy hunting with it, taking deer, taking javelina, taking pigs. Now, a company that's been producing some, some really good guns for a long time, but especially in the last few years, have been coming up with some innovative designs and some, some really uh, fine hunting guns at a, a really great price uh, point is Hatson. And Hatson USA uh, has uh, been working with me quite a bit over the last few years. They released a gun called the Pile Driver about three or four years ago uh, at SHOT Show. And um, I started taking this gun out before release to market and have continued to do so. As a matter of fact, it, I guess it's fair to say it's become my, my default hunting gun. I use it a lot. I've taken deer, taken hogs, taken javelina, uh, taken all kinds of game with this gun, and uh, it's done a really great job. It's available in both 457 and a, um, a 50 caliber, and uh, a powerful gun. It's, it's right there. In terms of the production gun, until we get to this last gun I'm going to talk about, um, it, it along with the uh, Air Force shared the most powerful gun. The specs are pretty close to the same. 457 is putting out around 700, uh, maybe a little bit over, and, uh, and the 50 caliber a little bit over. Uh, eight. The um, gun is a bullpup design, and that everything's moved back, but as you'll see, and we'll talk about this, it's a long bullpup, but uh, the gun is, uh, is ergonomic. Even though it's uh, long and a little heavy, it balances well. Um, it's ergonomic stock, fits good. Um, I use low, uh, low profile mounts when I'm shooting this gun. Um, and uh, this is another one that uh, has really done well by me. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more. We'll get into the gun and I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, exactly what I'm hunting with these days with it. But uh, the pod driver has become, I, I'd have to say, it's one of my favorite all around hunting guns right now. It's one I have a lot of faith in. I know I'm gonna take down the game I'm going after. And I find the, uh, the ergonomics good and the overall size manageable, though it is a bit of a, a long barrel. It's one of the longer guns out there. So the Hatson Pile Driver is a bullpup design. It's available in 457 and 50 caliber. Uh, the gun uses a 480 carb cc carbon fiber tank. And it fills to a 4,300 psi, about a little bit higher. Um, it's a side lever action. It uses Hatson's proven Quattro trigger. Really nice uh, trigger uh, on, on this gun. Um, the, it's a big gun. Length overall, 46 and a half inches. The length of the barrel is 33 inches. And the weight's about 10 pounds, um, give or take a, a couple of ounces. It puts out about 700 foot-pound energy, uh, 700 FPE uh, in the 45 and 800 foot-pound energy in the 50 caliber. So it's a, it's a powerful gun. But uh, overall, the, the package is, is great. The power's there, but more importantly, the gun's great to carry, it's ergonomic, and um, I can shoot it well from just about any, any position, and it's dead accurate. Uh, so uh, all those things give me a lot of confidence with this gun in the field. I guess with the, uh, the hats and pile driver, the only thing I'd really like to change is I'd like to make it a little lighter and a 
a lot shorter. So I've been talking a lot with the guys over at Hats, and finally uh, they they gave me a, a version where they cut down the uh, the barrel length, uh, and uh, they recrown the barrel. It's about uh, overall length of the gun right now is about 33 uh, and a half inches long, and uh, this gun is still spot on with terms of accuracy. I've lost about a hundred foot pound of energy, but you know I think once you get past the the kind of 500 foot pound mark. Um, you can take just about anything in North America, sure. Maybe if I was going out specifically for bear, or if I was going out to shoot a, a bison or some other huge game, I'd go for more power, even if it meant a bigger gun to lug around. But for most of my hunting for deer and hogs, I'd rather have something compact that I can move around with easily. And, and this gun, so far on my hunts, has proven to be just that. I'm really enjoying hunting with this gun a lot uh, in, in this uh, configuration. The next gun I'm going to talk about in my collection is one that I've had for a while. Um, I haven't used it quite as much, uh, partially because it's a 308, and uh, I've, I've used that primarily for predator hunting. So I've used it more for predator hunting than big game hunting, uh, but it's been a really good long-range gun for me. Uh, and this one is it's called the uh, PBBA, the Professional Big Bore Air Gun, and it's it's manufactured um, by a company that's headed up by uh, by a friend of mine, Terry Tate. Um, who I've known for years. Uh, I've done some really good hunts with him uh, many, many years ago. But, but Terry's down in uh, East uh, East Texas. The gun that I've got is a sporter stock, a laminate stock. It's 308. Um, really beautiful gun. Uh, I, I like the streamline uh, uh, type of traditional um, configuration in these guns. Uh, this this one is a lot like. Um, the uh, the Quackenbush in terms of having a, a second cocking arm, but it's on the opposite side of the gun, whereas on the the Quackenbush are both on the same side. Uh, but uh, these guns are really well made, really solid, and I've seen some of the footage with some of the ones shooting larger calibers on big game, and you can't deny how powerful they are. But I like this gun. As I said, I've used it I've used, I've used it more for for uh, predators, uh, but uh, I'm going to get this out. I think I might take it out for Havelina this year. Uh, another one of those really uh, really fine guns. So uh, just. Just a couple other things to mention about the PBBA rifle, the professional big bore uh, air gun rifle. The length overall is about 45 inches, the length of the barrel is 26 inches, and that barrel is shrouded. Does a pretty good job of quieting the gun down. Not whisper quiet, but it, it helps. Um, it fills to 3,000 psi, and you get about four to five shots per fill. There's, as mentioned, a separate bolt for loading and a bolt for cocking the, the rifle. Okay, so we've gone through most of my guns, and now we're in the uh, the run for the uh, for the uh, last ones that uh, are in my collection that I'm using uh, more routinely. And those are the guns from a new company uh, in the air gunning world called AEA, and they do both uh, a mid bore or they do standard bore and mid bore guns as well as the big bores. But it's their big bore that really um, captured a lot of interest, in part, large part due to the fact that. Their first entry was a 72 caliber gun, which, you know, there's been bickering back and forth who makes the most powerful guns, and this one kind of put that whole argument to uh, to bed. Their uh, 72 caliber and the 30, uh, 32 inch barrel configuration uh, goes up to about 1,500 uh, uh, foot pound of energy. Um, I'm getting considerably less in my guns because I'm using shorter barrels. Uh, the guns come in three different barrel lengths. There's a, a 16, a 24, and a 32 inch barrel, and there's a uh, quite a spread in uh, in uh, foot pound of energy that those guns put out from a low on the 900 foot pound side for the 24 inch barrel up to uh, like I said 1500. So it's uh, it's a powerful rifle. Now the one I'm going to show you right now that I've been using probably the the most. I've got the 16 inch barrel. It actually looks longer than that because I've also got an adapter on, and I use that with a. Uh, a suppressor from uh, Donnie FL that he made specifically for this gun. And with his suppressor mounted, uh, the gun is substantial. It's quite a can, but man, this thing works quieting the gun down. And uh, this has become a 
a hunting gun that I've really enjoyed hunting with and uh, I'll be using it a lot more this season as well. So I've been using the uh, 16 inch and the 24 inch barrel. I don't have the 32 inch barrel in the um, in the 72 caliber gun, but they've just come out with the 58 caliber gun uh, that uh, is, uh, it's a big gun, it's a full size gun and uh, haven't had a chance to get it out yet. It came to me at the end of the season, so I'll be getting it out more this year. I'm gonna take it out for, either deer or hogs, I haven't decided which yet, but I'll be using it. Uh, so let me uh, let me show you these guns and we'll talk a little bit about them uh, before we wrap up this, uh, this video. In these clips you see uh, three of my AEA guns, the 24 inch on the top, the 16 inch on the middle, those are both 72 caliber, and then the new uh, 58 caliber at the bottom, which you see has a much bigger tank and is a bigger gun. But these guns are all really well proportioned. Uh, they've got nice sporter stocks, they're balanced well. They're bigger guns, they're heavier guns, but still uh, they, they uh, really come to shoulder well and they mount well. And maybe the weight helps a little bit with, with that. Especially when you're shooting that big 72 caliber slug, these guns could have a bit of a recoil and that weight helps to dampen that out. Uh, wouldn't underestimate the pushback you get off that big chunk of lead flying down, uh, down uh, range. So the, uh, the guns again uh, are available in, uh, in a multitude of barrels, uh, the uh, 162432 32 calibers. They've got 72 and a 58 caliber now. And uh, these guns are uh, pretty impressive. Definitely the most powerful air guns out there right now. But again, that's not the most important factor, power. It's everything else that goes along with it. Accuracy, ease of carry, uh, shootability, all of those factors are equally important. So you need to find the, uh, the gun that fits you the best. So there you had it, a trip through my uh, my gun safe. We looked at my big bores. We looked at most of them. I have a few others that are lower power, but still have their places, but I didn't I didn't include them in that group. Maybe I'll take a look at kind of the, the lower power big bores and, and where I use those uh, in another time. But uh, these are the, the uh, powerful kind of magnum, if you will, uh, power big bore air guns that I'm using. Now, I'm not, copping out by saying I'm not going to pick a favorite because quite honestly my favorite depends on the type of hunting I'm doing whether I'm going to be hiking for miles whether I'm shooting out of a ground blind a tree blind whether I'm going to be running and gunning different areas uh, in a, uh, a truck or four-wheeler all those things come into play and, and the gun that is the best gun depends on the situation so what I will say is any of the guns I've shown you are all quality guns. Any one of those I'm happy to be in the field hunting with. And any one of those can be the ideal gun for you, depending on how you're gonna use it and what you wanna do with it. So my, my suggestion or my recommendation is that you really think hard about how you're gonna use a gun. Are you, know, are you gonna be hiking miles with it? You, you don't want a 12 pound gun strapped to your back if you are. Um, are you going to be shooting long range where you're having a precision fit and, and uh, being able to get shot to shot consistency is more important than anything? Are you in a place that's noise sensitive? All of those. Take a look at them and then decide. But what I will say is that any one of the guns I've shown here could be an ideal gun for you. Uh, depending on, again, your situation and what you like. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. You found it interesting. I know it's me up talking. If that's not your thing, don't worry. This won't be all that's coming. Um, I'm going to have a lot of uh, a lot of hunts coming up this uh, this season. Uh, but I also thought, you know, I, I get a lot of questions about the type of gear I'm using, the guns and everything else, that occasionally putting out a video like this might be of interest. So if it is, let me know again in the comments. Um, and as I asked before, give it a uh, thumbs up, a like, a share if you did like it. And I uh, hope to see you back again.